Here's the 2.5 that I just finished pulling out of my truck. Um, I'm in the middle of teardown. I've started to get the exhaust manifold off. I'm getting the intake off here soon. And then I'm gonna take the head off to see how bad I damaged the pistons, putting 18 pounds of boost through stock internals with not the greatest tune in the universe. And then we're gonna flip it over, check the insides, see how much play we have on the rods, and maybe pop some pistons out and see how many pistons have a shitload of blow-by. I'm gonna guess a lot. Uh, anyways, the manifold I took off. This is Mark V turbo manifold that I handmade. I don't have the greatest fab skills in the world and this was done with a MIG welder. This is like, you can, you can tell, it's solid. This is, what is it, like schedule 10 equivalent pipe, I guess? And it seems to have lasted. It was pretty damn smooth, but it does look like my gaskets have been leaking on the sides. So it could have been doing better, but it's been the best it has been and it wasn't cracking. You can see right there, there's a little bit of crackage starting to happen, but it's not gonna be on an engine that's running anymore, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna get more into the teardown and see where we get. All right, I got her all stripped down there. Everything seemed fine coming off, nothing too crazy. Uh, I just busted all the head bolts loose and I'm gonna take that off and see what we got underneath. It's gonna be a complete mystery to me because again, I the tune was only as good as we could get on the stock computer with limited knowledge, so It'll be interesting to see how much detonation, how much knock happened on all those pistons. It's going to be very interesting. Alrighty, what do we got? So, <laughs> initial reactions, I, I thought I might have lifted the head at some point. There's a bit of water leaking out this way. Maybe between those, yeah, actually between the cylinders, it's a little wet. I'll have to flip the head over and see, but that doesn't look that bad. Interesting. So take a look at this. So first look, it doesn't look that bad. Um, I don't know what I was feeling because when I was driving it before, uh, around 16 to 18 pounds of boost, you'd floor it and you could hear the engine go, Wah! and it'd make this awful noise. And I figured it was lifting the head because you'd back off the throttle and it would speed up. So that could be all these wet spots in the middle pressure leaking between cylinders or this guy right here looks very suspect of air getting out but combustion wise it actually wasn't that bad there's lots of oil in there that's for damn sure so she's she's pretty cooked in that matter we'll have to uh flip around and check it out oh yeah there's a there's some wear in there holy shit all right, cool. There's no burn marks on the pistons. There's a little bit of wear, but this thing's got 250,000K on it. So I'm actually really impressed. The head, the gasket's still in one piece. There's no knock or detonation marks in there. It's just, it's oiler and all hell, that's for sure. But I mean, it doesn't look bad. That's That's pretty impressive. Wonder if maybe I was just dealing with valve float. Huh. So I forgot to show the oil before I drained it. It didn't really show anything. There was the slightest, and I mean like super, super slightest amount of gray in it, but I don't think it was coolant. Uh, I'll show you when I flip it over where I think it was coming from. But apart from that, I'm just gonna flip it over, take probably piston two out, because that's the one that has the most wear on the cylinder just to see how she's doing. And we'll check the rod bearings and the uh, crank while we're down there too. So let's get this thing over. Oh Lord, this is hard with one hand. And here's the bottom of this bad boy. You can see how teeny tiny this crank is. It's absolutely shrimpy compared to the three liter I'm gonna be putting in it. As far as rods go, there's a little play there, but that's pretty normal. Pretty normal. Also pretty normal. 
and also pretty normal. So that's good to see. I wasn't starving anything of oil. There's uh, nothing in the oil pump pickup. The camshaft looks barely used apart from the obvious. Obviously a spot where the rollers have been riding, but there's no huge wear. There's no flat spots on it. So that was doing all right. I want to say where I think all the gray was coming from in the oil was uh, just wear from the cylinder walls. Because if you look on the edge of the block, you can just see gray streaks. So I think that's where all that was coming from. I don't think it was coolant related because the bottom, or so, because the inside of the engine here actually looks really clean, which I'm really, really happy to see. So yeah, I'm going to pop off piston two and maybe main bearing number two just to see the bearings because I don't think there's a lot of play in the crank either. No, there's hardly any. There's a minuscule amount of end play I can feel. You probably can't hear it, but that's normal. fell out. Oh yeah, that just barely stopped. Wow. Piston's got some scratching on the side of it. It's probably flopping around in that bore. The rings aren't super worn. I'll have to check the gap to see just how worn they are. Let's get that rod bearing off. Well, it's not bad. It's not perfect, but again, this has like 250,000 kilometers on it. So here's the rod bearing that was in the cap. You see there's just a little streak of wear in that guy, which isn't that bad considering the mileage and the abuse I put this thing through. That's not bad at all. The other side of the rod bearing, same thing. So it was getting a little worn in the one spot there. How's the uh, crank journal look? Oh, it's fantastic. There's, yeah, there's some scratches on the crank. Like it's nowhere, nowhere close to perfect. But you can see just how weak this crankshaft is. Like, look at how they have these holes in here for balancing. There's no structure to this crankshaft. The fact this took 18 pounds of boost and didn't blow up is mind boggling to me. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I don't know how well it shows on camera, but that cylinder is just glazed over. I'd have to take some measurements to see how worn, but I don't have the tools for that. Uh, based on the ridge that I can catch with my fingernail, it's pretty damn worn out. <laughs> Uh, let's pop the main bearing off just to have a quick peek at that, and that's all I really want to see. Oh, one thing I can do is compare, I've always been curious about this, because these are a 4 inch bore, that's the same as a small block Chev, um, and I conveniently have a piston out of my 350 that blew up. Right here, this is a 30 over piston based on the marks in the middle there, but uh, oh yeah, they're wildly different. How's the pin height though? <laughs> you can totally use a 350 piston and a 2.5. Just looking at it there, I know the this one is destroyed, but they look really similar. So you can totally use a 350 piston and a 2.5. You get a flat top piston with valve reliefs and make some high, high compression out of that thing. That'd be cool. Chrome sockets on an impact. It works.
about the same as the rod bearing. You can see just, just a bit of wear going on. So there's just ever so slightly some wear. I mean, maybe more than slightly. Like you can, you can catch these grooves pretty well, but for what it was and the, the abuse it took, that's not bad. Yeah, 250,000 kilometers. I'm gonna call that pretty damn good. Uh, I'm gonna flip it around, check that cylinder, and then I'm gonna show you the three liter very quickly and I'll be done. Yeah, it's just like mirror polish in there. What you want is a cross hatch, basically like grew, strategic grooves in your cylinder that help control oil. So a smooth wall like this will let oil flow by the rings easier than one with a cross hatch pattern. So that's where some of the power was going in this thing. But it's also, it's super worn, which you can probably see with the light there. That groove is huge. The one other thing I do want to see is ring gap with the uh, the top ring at least. So let's see if I can pull this off here with one hand or not. All right, there we go. So let's just tuck it in here first. Square that up. Okay, it's close enough for all I care about. Uh, I don't have any measuring tools, but let's see. So that, that gap there, let's just take a reference in our mind, is not very tight. It's actually quite open. Um, now I'm gonna push it down past where that ridge is, because that's where it's been wearing its whole life, and see how big that changes to. So we're gonna get it down quite a ways. Let's try there, square it up with the ring. Oh yeah, she's uh, she's got some gap. Okay, so I did some digging just for reference. Uh, I couldn't find much on a 2.5 ring gap spec. So I searched for a 350 instead, which is very similar. So it's at least something to go off of. And a 350 requires a 0.16 ring gap on the top ring. So this is the top ring of this piston here. Uh, I don't know if you know how small 0.016 is, but that is significantly larger. Uh, actually, I could probably check it with a drill bit. Let's try one of these guys. Uh, nope, not quite. Might be less than I think it is. Okay, so that fits in there pretty easy. There's still a lot of slop. But this is a reference, so what size drill bit was that? That was a... That was a 3 64ths of an inch drill bit, and there was a lot of play on that. So let's convert 3 64ths to decimal. 3 divided by 64. Yeah, that, uh, that ring gap is a little excessive, so I'm gonna say it's probably 050 plus. That is really worn out. <laughs> this thing would have had a ton of blow by, which explains all the burnt garbage on the cylinders. That amount of gap here uh, is pretty evident why this little engine was able to handle 18 PSI. So you gotta consider all of these pistons probably have about the same ring gap, meaning there's not a very great seal going on in there. Basically, if that gap is too tight and you're trying to make more power than this is supposed to stock, you're gonna make more heat and more heat is gonna expand these rings, uh, causing them to butt up and usually destroy an engine. Uh, so usually what you do is you file your rings to have a bigger gap so you can make more power. Um, I thought it was fine being that this engine has high kilometers that the ring gap would be okay and I think I was right. So this right here was probably the only saving grace for why I was able to put so much boost into this stupid thing. Overall, I'm really impressed with the insides of this. It, the tune we had in it was decent, so 
it's gonna make me pretty excited for when I start putting boost through the three liter. Uh, I'll show you this really quick, just as a comparison. So if you take into consideration this crankshaft here and how small this one is, and then you come look at this three liter, this crank is ridiculous. It's why a lot of guys like to swap boat engines into their vehicles, or at least boat engine parts, because this crank is like double, if not triple the size of that other one. So I have huge hopes that this is gonna make some serious power once I put some boost on it, get a different camshaft, and I'm super excited. That's all for engine disassembly. Now I get to start doing some differential swaps on Rat 10, and it's gonna be fun, so stay tuned.